Good afternoon, everyone. We'll start the Nebraska press conference with an opening statement from Coach Williams. Go ahead, Coach. Um, this is heart-wrenching and, and just a super disappointing loss in overtime here. Our kids came here expecting to win, and nobody else really probably believed that we would even be in the championship game, much less um, have a chance to win it, but we believed. And our locker room believed, our, our, our whole team believed, and um, I'm so proud of the contributions we got from our entire roster this entire tournament, and I am proud of the classy group of champions that compete the way they do that we have here at Nebraska. Thank you, Coach. Questions for the student athletes. First question, please, right here in the front row. Yeah, hey, uh, Amy Jess, Lincoln Journal Star. Jazz, just what was the mood in the locker room like after that one, um, just knowing y'all were so close and played mm -hmm. such a good game for most of it? Yeah, I think everyone's still <laughs> pretty down right now. Um, we kind of just rallied around each other and just wanted to appreciate how, how special what we just did was. Um, obviously it sucks because we really feel like we could have won that game. Um, but we'll be good. Um, it's going to sing for a little bit, but this team is special. Question in the third row back there. Go ahead. Lex, what, what did you guys do so well that put you in a position to have a chance to, to play with Iowa and win the game today? You know what? This whole tournament, we really just played for each other. And I just fueled us the whole game. And this whole tournament, and um, we just believed. We believe in each other. We believe in what our coaches are saying. And um, belief can take you really far. Other questions for the student athletes in the back? This goes for any of you guys. I know it must be extremely challenging to get over this so quickly, but it's not over. You know, now it's a new season, and, you know, I know this tournament starts a week before, but, you know, how do you guys just plan to regroup and rally around each other and get ready for the next tournament? I think we just have to build off what, we just, what we've just done. I mean, we played – four games in an overtime, and I'm pretty sure we could go out and play another quarter if we wanted to. I think that's something that's going to be super important in the postseason, and just to continue that belief that we have in each other, that we can now make a deep run in the NCAA and um, set ourselves up really well. Follow up over there. Natalie, you, you pride yourselves on rebounding and defense. What allowed you to, to get active scoring today, and what, what set that up? I knew that I had to finish today, and it was going to be a tough one, so I had to show up to play. And I thought that just doing the little things today is what helped keep us in this game. Follow up here in the front. Yeah, uh, for any of you, I know this isn't the result that you wanted, but what does it say um, about your group that you took Iowa to overtime in the Big Ten championship game? Like, What does that say about how difficult you guys will be to play moving forward? I mean, not only did we take them – to overtime, like we played a whole another game. This is our fourth game, this is their third. Um, we're just fighters. Um, you know, they'll go on a run and we just come back. Um, I don't know, we just are playing really well together. People are stepping up, making huge plays for each other and um, I wouldn't want to be a part of any other program. Follow up over here. Jazz, you guys. Kept rallying in overtime, hit a couple big threes. I guess ultimately what was the difference in the in overtime period? Yeah, I think our ability to be able to respond. Uh, we had the entire stadium against us, and we were able to silence the crowd. We were able to have freshmen step up. Like that is, I've never seen that in any other program, to be able to have freshmen like we do. Um, yeah, we just fell a little short. Um, but I think uh, we played a great game. Any final questions for the student athletes? All right, last one right here. Uh, Jazz, just, I mean, obviously it hurts now, but ultimately how will you remember this week and what you guys did over four days here? Yeah, I think it's super special. Um, I don't, <laughs> I've never been a part of anything like this, and it goes to show the people that we have on this team. They're incredible, incredible people. I, like I like said, I wouldn't want to do this with anyone else. Thank you, student athletes. You can head back to the locker room. Thank you. Love you guys. Questions for Coach Williams. 
We'll start here in the front. Amy, uh, a similar question that I asked uh, the girls, just I know it's not the result that you wanted, but what does this say about your squad that you were able to advance this far playing four games um, and the last one was in overtime? Well, um, first of all, Amy, thanks for being here and, and um, we appreciate all of you guys that made the trip up to, to be here to support us as well and, and to cover our team. But um, I think that um, watching this team rally together and the way they've um, just really kind of taken on the mantra of playing for each other, um, they've just found ways to pick each other up and have each other's back and contribute in ways that we need them to contribute. And if that's Maddie Kroll coming in and having two assists and no turnovers, if that's um, Jess Petrie coming in and, and spelling some kids with foul trouble, if it's Callan Hay coming in and giving us a spark and scoring punch or taking charges, um, everybody has found a way to contribute and pick up and, and um, their team. And I'm just so proud of my staff and my my team for, for everything they've poured into this week and putting ourselves in a position to, to compete for a championship. Next question in the back. Hey coach, congrats on a great run. Um, I just want to talk about quickly just what Logan did today and how much confidence she had because, you know, what she did today was truly special. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it together up here, but yeah, what Logan did is special. And what people don't know is what she's fighting through to be out there on this court fighting with her teammates. And then, um, you know, watching her confidence, we saw it shine through early. We got a trip to Greece this year um, in the summer. And um, when we were prepping for that trip, we were. We were in practice, and I'm telling you, um, the girls learned in a real hurry that she's a very confident shooter. She wants the ball in her hands, and she's not afraid. And, and there are a couple times where she missed a couple shots early, maybe even in the first part of our season wasn't particularly shooting well. And the girls were kind of like, um, you know, trying to be there for her and say, I uh, encourage her, hey, keep shooting, Logan. She said, oh, I will. <laughs> and uh, that's the confidence that she's maintained this entire season. And in the biggest moment, she, um, she just shines like the bright star that she is. I'm so proud of the way she competes. She took charge today. Um, she wanted to be out there um, fighting uh, for her team and, and uh, just stepped up really big. Question in the back. Yeah, Amy Kip Scoggins with the Minneapolis Star Tribune here. The composure and toughness that your team showed um, – Every time they hit a shot or felt like they were going to get on a run, the crowd got into it. It seemed like you guys came down and, and answered that. Has that been a hallmark of your team this season? It kind of has been a hallmark. And um, we've been preaching response, response, response. How do you respond when things go good? How do you respond when things go bad? How do you respond when there's adversity that comes through a season? How do you respond when there's adversity that comes through a game? And um, I'm just so proud of the way that they have responded. I thought they did. Um, they, they shut out the, um, the noise, the, the outside noise, and just were able to lock in. And, and every single time it felt like we had an answer and, and we're at answering r runs. And I think um, that just shows their commitment to wanting to have a positive response and do the next best thing on every step. Question right here. Amy, uh, <clears throat> Dave Campbell with the AP. Uh, specifically Natalie plays with kind of that fearlessness too I guess what has stood out to you about just her impact on your team this year yeah Natalie's impact has been huge um, I think she's just a winner that knows how to win and wants to make big plays and finds ways to do it on both sides of the ball and I can't ever predict really if it's going to come from scoring if it's going to come from rebounding if it's going to come offensive rebounds if it's going to come defensive deflections um, block shots you know I don't really know exactly but I know she's going to impact games and um, she comes from really successful programs where uh, they expect to win, and she's brought that expectation right here to Nebraska. Question right here in the fourth row. Uh, just on that last possession of the fourth quarter and some of the ones late in overtime, what did they, I, I would kind of do to disrupt some of those plays? 
could you repeat it, Drake? I, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time hearing. Sorry, uh, just what did Iowa do to disrupt some of those plays late game, this end of the fourth quarter and in overtime? Yeah, I mean, I thought they picked up their defensive pressure. They knew um, that Jazz Shelley had a game winner against them um, at our place and uh, when we were able to to knock them off. And so I think they tightened things up on that. Um, I would have, too. Um, she was making plays. She had 13 uh, assists on the day, uh, making plays for our team. And so I thought they got a little bit more aggressive, got some uh, deflections, kind of disrupted some of our timing. But... Um, you know, from from my standpoint, if we're if we're able to score, you know, we out or tied them in the fourth quarter and then scored 12 points in overtime. We still offensively were doing the things we needed to do. Um, just gave up a few too many there in overtime. Any final questions for Coach Williams here in the front? What's your message to them after this one? Um, they all, you know seem really emotional and upset about it, but what do you tell them moving forward to turn the page onto whatever happens uh, next week? Yeah, I think right now I'm just going to let them um, feel the moment um, and, and really kind of soak this up. Um, it's okay um, for them to, to have some time to, to really be disappointed because they put their heart and souls on the line up here, and nobody else did, but we expected to win. And, um, and so... When you fall short of that, that's okay. You know, we, with four games to go in the regular season, we had a little picture that put us in the double by bracket. And we cut it into a four piece puzzle. And we had four games left. And we said, let's put all four pieces of that puzzle together. And we fell a little short at Illinois against a really, really veteran, um, tough team on the road. And we, we spent a lot of time as a team talking about how do you respond when you set goals for yourself and they don't happen. You just reset and find new goals to go after. And that's exactly what we will eventually get to, Amy, is setting new goals for our team. We feel like we are incredibly poised to make a run in the next tournament. And, um, and it's going to take every single soul on our team, given just what they did up here in the Big Ten tournament. All right. Thank you, Coach.